So this is Let Us Interrupt You Weekend Recap here. This is an episode. Uh, this is the the off-schedule show, as I would like to normally call it here at this point. It's a recap of what happened weekend. A lot of busy stuff that happened over the weekend, including the UFC 289, Amanda Nunes announcing her retirement, uh, Floyd Mayweather and John Gotti, the mafia uh, kid, uh, getting to a fight to the point where it was out of hand and it got into the crowd. So we might see this happen again. I think this was this John Gotti the third, I believe. Uh, let's see what else happened. We have the Raptors uh, assistant head coach getting, uh, or excuse me, the Memphis Grizzlies assistant head coach getting hired for the Toronto Raptors head coching gig and Darko Rajkovic. Uh, we had Conor McGregor during the Heat um, Nuggets game, game four, which I didn't even even know about this till after the game had already expired from a couple of days afterward that uh mcgregor knocked out the heat mascot he got sent to the hospital and he is uh possibly gonna be suing conor mcgregor for hospital bills i mean i i don't get what mcgregor's issue was with the heat mascot if he had a few with the heat mascot if, if a heat mascot owed him money i don't know if they were just playing around at that point all i know is he legit knocked out the mascot we had that uh we got rumors about chris paul uh, possibly being rumored to go to, to either the following teams, the Lakers and the Knicks at this point, or the Warriors, because they've now gained interest on him. Uh, Kyrie Irving, uh, possibly having some interest from the Houston Rockets now at this point. And well, breaking news as I just sat in here, Fred Van Vliet will be a free agent because he just denied his uh, contract uh, contract extension with the Raptors, so he will be an unrestricted free agent coming this July. Um. Let's see what else that we have here. We have Charles Lee going to be the, the next top assistant, uh, one of the top assistant coaches now for the Celtics. He just left the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, Stone was hit by a foul pitch uh, over the weekend with the Yankees uh, Red Sox rivalry over the weekend. Uh, he was able to finish off the series broadcast in the game. Josh Jacobs looking to get out of Las Vegas at this point, requesting at this point to leave Las Vegas. He could be on the move at this point, posting some cryptic tweets. Uh, McCutcheon hit 2,000 hit uh, got 2,000 hits over the weekend for the Pittsburgh Pirates in their uh, series win. That was yesterday. Uh, Liam Hendricks, even though he just got back from cancer, is back on the IL with a shoulder inflammation. Not sure how long he's gonna be out for with that. Uh, there's some right trade rumors for Chase Young, and uh, possibly him getting uh, traded to possibly Detroit. Detroit Lions are are among the seven teams that are interested in getting, which is also the Bears. The Colts, the Patriots are in on this deal as well. Um, what I see, let's see what the other teams were. The, the uh, Bears were interested in getting the Seahawks, Steelers, 49ers. I just named the other two for you. That's seven of the teams I just named. Uh, and also starting out just well, we just got the Bahamas event set for the NCAA basketball tournament. We have Miami off its, its first Final Four. Will meet Georgia in the opener in the Bob Marr Championship Series, and Kansas State will face the Providence Friars and newly head coach Kim English, originally from George Mason. Uh, let's see, we got some uh, we got some other news in the horizon as well. Uh, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars possibly going to be playing in the uh, Daytona 500, uh, where the Daytona 500 will be at that race track area temporarily while they fix up Jacksonville in TIA Bank Arena. Uh, let's see. We have XFL Rod Woodson getting fired from his job as head coach. Von Miller going to expect to be back by week six at the Terrace ACL last year against the Detroit Lions. So he expected to be returning by week six. I, It's tough. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I'm not sure what the opponent's going to be at that point. Uh, Tyler Hero, uh, injury update, heat guard upgrade from questionable to possibly suiting up and for a possible return for tonight's game five. Break of elimination for Miami. Uh, Nuggets have never won the NBA Finals before. Game five is tonight. I, the Nuggets are going to win. Joker should be the MVP at this point. Um, that is your weekend recap here for as far as what I have for stories here. Uh, another thing about the XFL this weekend. They've uh, lost over $60 million this year in revenue. Not a good start for the Rocks creation as far as I'm concerned. The reason I thought about this trip was was really for this was because of the projected um, 
revenue they were supposed to bring in. They were supposed to be over more than the NFL was supposed to bring in. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case because they couldn't sell out arenas to save their lives. They had great TV revenue. I'll give you that. They had great TV revenue. Here's the thing that I think the the, the XFL failed to do here, and it failed to take advantage of why all the sports did this. Soccer's done this already. Um, I believe baseball's done this now. The NBA's done this now, and the NFL has officially done this now. They've done a ticket pick thing where they basically, if you have this app and you want to go to a sporting event, they freeze the tax on the state that you're in, and they freeze the other tax as well in a ticket tax that's being te- technology uh, emailed and transferred to your phone. So they freeze the tax at that point. So instead of paying like four hundred dollars each for a ticket, you're paying at least basically, oh, I don't know, like like around forty or fifty bucks a ticket. So it might even be even be more. I could be wrong on that one. Maybe maybe it's a hundred dollars less. Maybe it's just a hundred dollars each of that ticket at that point. Anyway, it's still it's still in the ballpark at this point of you saving a lot of money. And the fact the XFL couldn't have done that, and they had the opportunity to do that anyway throughout the year, and maybe they could do it when when the season starts next spring. The problem now is that it's already the damage is already done. I mean, when you have a leak like that, that that could that fail to take advantage of this and fail to look into it. I mean, apparently this ticket pick thing started back in April when they had this advertised out before the baseball season even started. The fact that the the XFL couldn't take advantage of that at first and talk with investors about this app, I mean, that's pretty bad. That's all I gotta say. Maybe The Rock needed more money at this point because he knew he wasn't making a movie in 2023. I don't know. I heard a lot of rumors about the movies productions and that Rock would be doing. And the first thought that popped in my head was the XFL is happening right around this time and it doesn't come to an end until May. So I don't know why they made up the movie rumors here when they were trying to get the Rock versus Roman Reigns for this past WrestleMania 39 in Hollywood. The best chance they could have done that match, by the way. And in reality, they didn't want to bring it up. And I can, and I have, and I have an honest opinion of why they didn't want to bring this up was because they didn't want to say it in front of Vince McMahon. Although now at this point, I can tell Vince McMahon that he, that he lost over $60 million in, in the XFL. Plus another 2020 uh, projections that they had in this video. They were supposed to make that much money. And so they lost over <laughs> over $60 million. That's not a good thing. Not a good thing to have at this point on your resume at this point. As far as being your first year owner of a team, this just seems like a really, really good episode of Ballers. The way, way of kicking it off at that point. And you go through the transition of seasons. Now, I don't know if Ballers are still continuing on HBO Max at this point or whatever they're doing it now or Showtime. But that would be one good episode, I guess, at this point. And they really want to tell the true life story of how The Rock managed to screw out himself and lose over $60 million with the XFL. I mean, that's just, that's just a big blow. And I think the XFL, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if he was charging more for XFL games more than anything else. You talk about a guy at this point that, you know, says he didn't want to run for president because he's doing all these other projects. No, the only reason why you don't want to run for president is because they know that I could give you as much money as you're, want, as you're wanting to. You're probably charging way too much money to watch these past their prime players or guys that, that could never make any NFL type of deal is what you really were charging for. You were trying to make everybody believe that this was a different league, was better than the NFL, and you probably couldn't get anybody to buy into the ticket revenue is what probably freaking happened in the first place. Not saying The Rock would be that kind of person, but any celebrity would, would overcharge for this. Anybody. Any celebrity, any athlete, former athlete, you know, that needed a dime more because they weren't making any, you know, money anymore playing the sport they used to play because they're all old and banged up. So they figured, you know, more charity, right? That's the case that you can make with that, that whole spe- spiel of things. As far as the XFL goes. I will say this, though. I, I've already said my piece right now about the Raptors head coaching gig. Uh, but for Darko Rakovich, congrats to him. Well-deserved. The only reason I'm looking this way is because my phone is charging. I don't have the long enough cord in here to um, – actually, I'm play this for a few minutes. That would be a lot easier for myself. So I'm just turning my back every time. Um, anyway, so that was that. But Draco, I, I got to say congrats to him. To taking the job. I didn't see this move coming. I thought this was a weird move for him to get hired at this point. And just the placing, the timing of it. You know, Fred Van Vliet's on his way out the door at this point. He's going to be a free agent. Siakam's going to probably demand a trade, you know, in the summertime. Either that or ask for his release from the team. 
and they're gonna be in rebuild mode anyway. And this guy is not gonna have know what to do with a team that's in rebuild mode. I mean, for a first year in, you're resorting right back to where the Detroit Pistons have been resorting to for the last 15 years in rebuild mode. So I wouldn't want to be a part of that rebuild mode at that point if I was a first year head coach because I think that hurts first year head coaches' opportunities to get other jobs. You know, later on, they're stuck in status quo at this point, and then they'll be like forgotten about by ownership. And then, then, then until their season completely comes to the shoot bag, then they look into it and they go, "Oh, that's that's the reason why we we stink." Not really the reason, but you get what you get the point of all of it, and they eventually let you go. Anyway, Conor McGregor punching out uh, the Heat mascot. I, that, I thought this was a stupid display on Conor McGregor's part of it, and he should be getting a big lawsuit from that mascot here. I don't know if this. I don't know if this. If, and here's the sad thing: this was supposed to be all for fun. The fact that you're sending this guy to the hospital, you can't control your temper for just a little at shoot for five minutes. I don't know. I, I just think the whole thing is just sad. And I think Conor McGregor at this point and UFC should be, a, you know, should really be ashamed of, of that whole display. And I think Dana White should be either finding this guy or suspending this guy or cutting his pay, whatever you got to do to find him. I mean, this is this is just ridiculous at this point. I've already said my piece about Chris Paul at this point. Where I think you end up going. I think Atlanta is the place for him to go with Jalen Brown. I say Trey Young comes in there with Chris Middleton to Milwaukee. Marcus Smart, as far as I'm concerned, if he wants if he wants to replace Chris Paul in, in the point guard position in Phoenix, that's a good trade right there. The only problem is what do you get back out of it though? And I think you get back honestly, if I had to be perfectly honest, you get Cameron Payne out of the deal. And some a couple of draft picks there and there for Phoenix. Denver Broncos are no longer interested in getting the Minnesota Vikings running back. I already mentioned that before, I think, to start off with, really. But it's now all up to Miami to sign him at this point. And I think Miami is going to sign him eventually. It's a matter of, you know, finding the right price for it and going cheap. And basically pulling the Bill Belichick over the wool over our eyes. Basically. So I mentioned Charles Lee. I mentioned John Sterling there. Uh, McCutcheon's 2,000 hit there. I went through this list pretty quickly. I, I, I wasn't just about the Mayweather Jr. Gotti the third uh, results here. The fact that this happened in the crowd didn't surprise me. You know, I kind of, you know, the the Logan Paul and um, Floyd Mayweather Jr. dispute went so well right after their match happened in an exhibition. It seems like these exhibitions go a little out of hand more than actual regular boxing matches. I'm starting to notice a pattern now at this point with this. And I know this is a mafia guy, you know, and it, it, it's, it's, Never really a good idea to mess with a mafia guy at this point, but mafia and boxing just don't add up. They just don't. It's unfortunate they don't, but it, it's just, it is what it is at this point anyway. I will just, if I had a prediction right now about where Fred, uh, I'm going to go back to the NBA in, in a second here, because I, I got another Zion Williamson take later on tonight in a bit here. Um, if I had to say where Fred Van Vliet ends up going, and I'm actually going to really be, be realistic realistic here about the whole thing. I think Fred Van Fleet, if I had to be perfectly honest here about where he would end up heading, honestly, at this point, and I think this is just this is just a interesting turn of events here, Dallas Mavericks sounds like a really li- realistic team that could, that could take him. Nice little bench producer. I mean, if Kyrie doesn't end up sticking around in, in Dallas, I think Fred Van Fleet would be perfect for the Mavericks at this point. It'd be perfect for LeBron to play with, too. Um, if you ever want to resort to going to Dallas at this point. And you bring in LeBron's son in the, in the mix and the whole thing, you get Van Fleet. You also get, uh, I think, realistically, you get Embiid, you get either Anthony Davis or Embiid or whatever you do. That Dallas Mavericks team would be a lot better with Fred Van Fleet. I did, I did think about the Knicks, but my first thought was was that maybe the Knicks don't need him because they got Jalen Brunson there already, and it makes no sense to change that whole dynamic. You know, My initial thought was Zion Williamson as well, and this ties right into my next story, which was a Zion Williamson story. So we, the third girl's name was Yamel Hilges, by the, uh, Hodges, by the way, that, that uh, Zion had slept with at that point because he was two-timing his pre- – uh, his, uh, I, his original lover that got the uh, stripper pregnant, I, I, I believe it was um, Mile Hodges Hills, I guess. 
I guess her name is Mariah Hills. I think her name is. I have no idea. Point is, Zion Williamson was playing like a dog at this point, and I figured out now why he hasn't played all in the last couple of years. You talk about a guy at this point that is really just horny, asking for a lot of sex from a lot of women at this point. And these girls, by the way, are either porn stars or strippers. And to 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 really just to really to get one of them pregnant at this point, or I think I, I think it turns out the original girl was pregnant here. And I guess the other two girls he was cheating on her with. So I you know maybe he was cheating on her. Maybe and in, in, in just the news popped out. But he's gonna be a dad at the same time too. And, I, and for Zion, here's another way of looking at this right now. I think New Orleans should be done with him at this point. Cut ties with at this point and start and start thinking about taking the rest of the way going forward. And because realistically. The Zion experiment in New Orleans has been dead now for a while. Um, realistically, they're not a playoff team. They're not for real. No one's going to take this team seriously. The Dallas Mavericks, in my opinion, to get Zion on here with LeBron James, mm -hmm. Bronny, and Fred Van Fleet, because I thought about the whole Kyrie Irving experiment. It'd be all right if Kyrie wants to stay in Dallas. Now you got Houston who's all in on it at this point, and you got Ime Adoka there who wants Kyrie. And I think at this point, if I had to choose between Ime Doker and, you know, Jason Kidd as head coach at this point, which, by the way, is not going that great. You have Luka there as well, by the way, as well in the mix in this whole thing, too. You got Zion as your center, Luka, LeBron James, Bronny, and Fred Van Fleet. That that team, realistically, I don't know if they'd be a championship caliber team. They'd be, they'd be a great playoff contending team, though. They would be. Now, as far as them creating a dynasty at this point, will that happen? I don't know. Will Bronny want to play with, not want to play with his father when he does get drafted here, or would he rather have him be his coach and not an actual teammate? Is it too much ball hawking involved? I mean, there's a lot there to be desired in this whole thing. Again, as far as that whole thing playing out, uh, but Zion at this point in the in the Houston experiment, it, it, it's dead. And honestly, I'd, I'd bring in C.J. McCollum at this point because he's not a realistic starter at this point without Damian Lillard on the floor. And Lillard at this point, who's willing to leave at this point? Um, and I would, and I wouldn't even mind this at all if C.J. McCollum reunited with Damian Lillard in Miami, with Jimmy Butler alongside with him and Kyle Lowry there playing off bench. I just, I wouldn't mind at this point because I actually might be a really good NBA final caliber team. And look, I mean, it, realistically, if Zion wants to go somewhere else as well, I mean, I, I I would say either Dallas for him or the Miami Heat. I mean, at this point, you need a fresh start. You need it. You need to prove everybody right. You know, at this point, to get over your 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 issues, you got to play more than thirty games. And here's my prediction right now: if Zion plays for about 65, 66 games for the Miami Heat, if he does end up going to that team with Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum, because that'd be a hell of a lineup too. I can predict you right now. That Zion Williamson would get MVP, would get comeback player of the year and get MVP in the same season with the Miami Heat. If you play for the Dallas Mavericks, they'd be a contending team. The problem is they wouldn't be an NBA Finals caliber team. They'd be semifinals losers at best with LeBron James and his son being there. That's it. If it was just his son there, different story. I think that I think the team would be just fine. You wouldn't have developing issues right out of the gate at this point. LeBron James, you know. You know, Prince James at this point and King James on the same team, that, that that whole dynamic would just ruin the team. And you got Kyrie's issues. I mean, that, that whole thing itself would be a colossal failure. And Fred Van Vliet would be his first time starting as a real point guard by himself outside of Toronto. So that's another issue right there. Miami's a better option for Zion at this point. But I think, I think as far as the New Orleans uh, Pelicans go is, at, at this point, they're not a real playoff team. So they should start tanking now going forward. In the meantime, Eric Spolster would be a perfect head coach for Zion anyways. So that's that's just my opinion. I mean, if if, if no one agrees with me on that one, with Zion being the MVP for a different team, I, I mean, come on. It would happen. And here's the reason why it would happen at this point. Because once LeBron retires, Bronny will be the face of the NBA. And Bronny's not even a proven pro, uh, uh, Product anyway, at this point, we haven't even seen this guy play one game of college basketball yet. This guy could be a total bust at this point in college basketball and in the NBA. He could go to the G League at this point for all we know. So don't say it's, you know, because I'm hearing all those things at this point, like once LeBron retires, then Bronny James would be the face of the NBA. I, I heard a lot of that. 
And I thought about that at first when Kenny Smith said it. I said to myself, you know what? His take wasn't really that wrong, but at the same time, it was kind of off base. But do I see Brian James ever being the face of the NBA once his father retires? No. If anything, I think Zion, I think it's a, yeah, I think it'll be. I think, I'll give you the following right now: Steph Curry, Cosby, Clay Thompson, Luka Doncic, and Zion Williamson. Those are your four possible faces of the NBA. And I, if you want to add in Jimmy Butler, number five, and Joker, number six, that's six right there. That's six players I just named right now that could possibly be the face of the NBA at this point. And the reason I put Zion in that listing is because, depending on what he does at this point, because he ain't going to be able to be the face of the NBA in New Orleans. But in Miami, yeah, better chance of that happening. You keep Bam Bale there, you get Jimmy Butler there, you get CJ McCollum and Damian Lillard, that trio together, plus what Zion there with Butler there, that team would win the NBA Finals. I'm just saying. That'd be an awesome NBA Finals weekend. As far as I'm concerned, that'd be huge. All right, so we have um, UFC results. If I can just pull up here on my uh, my tablet, here, my phone here, I would be able to. I, normally, I would be able to pull up on here. Probably lately, I haven't been having having really success with this phone. Mainly because I just cracked the phone the other day. So. Amanda Nunes, we did retain her championship. That fight did go to distance, and she did announce her retirement after the match. So that really surprised me about the whole thing, about her um, weekend and how it ended up playing out. Um, I'm not sure why it's not showing me the other fight here. It's going right into the uh, fight night on June 17th. So you, uh, five rounds it went. And with Amanda Nunes, who retained her championship in a unanimous decision. Uh, Charles uh, Oliveira got the key, uh, KO, uh, TKO knockout over ben, Benno Devarish. Uh, Mike Mallett forced Adam uh, Fujit to tap out in round two. Or actually, yeah, in round two. So it was a submission win for Mike Mallett there. Uh, Daniel Eig beat Nate Lavender in three rounds. Mark Andrade Barlett beat Eric Andres in by unanimous decision. Uh, Narsuin beat Almov at this. Uh, that actually ended up being a uh, no contest, I believe, with Chris Curtis. That ended in two rounds, I think. Uh, Jasmine Javanas Jiv defeated Miranda Maverick. Uh, Iman Zabali beat Ori Quang. I, th I think that's how you say it. Kyle Nelson beat Blake uh, Builder, as well as Stephen Irk uh, defeating uh, David Dovrak in three rounds. Diana Bel 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 Belda defeating Maria Oliveira by unanimous decision. That went in five, three rounds as well. That was in a strain weight division. But yeah, Amanda Nunes did retain her championship in the main event. It was the bantamweight uh, title match. That went five rounds. And, uh, yeah, uh, Mallet uh, got Fuji in the uh, guillotine uh, choke, by the way, in uh, two rounds. And uh, the Amov and Curtis, by the way, went, ended up in a no contest, so that ended up being a draw, which is rare in UFC, in my opinion, that it was, ended up being a draw, but it, it did. And, uh, yeah, very interesting there. Amanda Nunes, uh, great career as far as the UFC goes. I am surprised that she announced her retirement. Unless this is my opinion. This is my theory. Unless she got an offer from WWE at this point and, you know, from Vince McMahon and Dana White for this, uh, you know, business arrangement they got going on. That's the only thing I could think of here. Um, this went five rounds. I mean, you got 196 total strikes in there to 57. She basically out, you know, banged this girl up completely. Hit her body up. I, I mean, I don't even know how Atlanta even lasted five rounds by looking at the, the the total, you know, damage that that Atlanta walked away with in the end. I mean, you talk about unanimous decision. I mean, this wasn't even close. Um, at the end of all, it doesn't matter. Nunez is the champion, which means now her title is going to be vacated at this point because she retired at the end of her fight. So there you go. Um. 
We also have some news right now about Novak uh, Djokovic getting his 24th major uh, title, surpassing Rafael Nadal for the most titles in U.S. Tennis Open history. So congrats to Novak uh, Djokovic again with the um, win over the weekend. And that was that. Um, we have some Patriot training camp, uh, mini camp news. There were three players missing today. There was no Juju Smith-Schuster. No Trent Brown due to a miss of flight, which that might be the last straw with, with him as far as him being a Patriot goes. So look for him being traded midway through training camp. Um, and also we have Lawrence Guy over some contract issues. So another guy that could be gone before the season, season even starts at this point with the Patriots. The Judas Smith Schuster one surprised me. He's injured at this point. They're not calling it an injury at this point, but he's banged up. He's been banged up since Super Bowl 58 uh, when they defeated the uh, the Eagles, the Chiefs did, with Judas Smith-Schuster there. Judas Smith-Schuster was a big piece of that second half of that offense. I, mean, I hate to say it. This is probably why New England came and got him afterward and why this guy earned a ring with the Chiefs. I mean, earned it in that second half. I mean, it, you could say in the first half it probably didn't make much of a difference, but if Judas Smith-Schuster is a big piece of that reason for mostly in that second half, along with Kadarius Tony and Travis Kelsey, of course. But – that key difference right there, that game right there, that 10-point comeback was not easy, okay? They almost blew this game. If it wasn't for that Philadelphia, it wasn't for James Bradbury, obviously holding uh, Judas Smith-Schuster in the end in a catchable situation with that ball. I don't know. I mean, to me, it's just – it's really telling here. And the difference with that one was that that, that was past five or six yards at that point. It wasn't like the two-yard penalty that the Rams had in the end zone in that Cincinnati Bengal game, which I still say was one of the worst holding calls ever, and it was because it was not holding. That throw from a home to Drew Smith-Schuster with Bradbury clearly tugging on the jersey and pulling at him at a catchable ball, the referees are going to call that every time, no matter if it's postseason or not. That's blatantly obvious. But Schuster's been doing, doing with an ankle injury now at this point. Has not got a, a pass yet for Mac Jones. Uh, Bailey Zappi at this point prepping himself uh, prepping himself for a starting job, possibly if Mac Jones does fail. That's what I've heard today. I wouldn't be surprised at this point if Mac Jones does fail and they just turn to ba Bailey Zappi. That really wouldn't surprise me because realistically, Mac Jones has not given much of a reason why at this point that he should keep the starting job. Mac's got the job 100%. Don't, don't get me wrong, but I, I this is his job still to lose. And if he does get injured here this time around here again, I think all bets are up. I think they, they stick with Bailey Zappi here going forward. When Mac gets healthy, that's great. But I think he loses that job. It's like when Brady took the job from Drew Bledsoe. He kept it. I mean, yeah, they went to the AFC title game and Bledsoe started the next week. but Or, or Brady started but got injured and Bledsoe filled in the rest of the way. But the difference here is that I, Mac Jones at this point is not, do, is not getting himself any brownie points. All the... All this stuff considered at this point, you know, Deon the whole DeAndre Hopkins stuff right now. You know, how the you know, Bill Butler saying how, you know, I'm not sure if he's gonna visit here this week. You ask him. That's his decision. And then basically Matt going out there saying, you know, we love D Hobby, we love him to play here, but we got talented players. That's not up to me. But yeah, basically just taking shots at Bill and Robert Kraft at this point. So it's really some shots back and forth. That whole culture down there is all out of whack. I hate to say it. It is. Has not been the same since last year. Definitely with the whole Josh McDaniels leaving doesn't really help. And now you bring in Bill O'Brien now at this point. That may be the deciding factor here of them not getting DeAndre Hopkins. Because Bill O'Brien and Hop have got heat. They've got history at this point. So to me, that really wouldn't be surprising if this were to end up uh, practically just combusting in the end and, you know, Bill Belichick gets fired at the end of the year or fired midway through the season or just announces his retirement before the season even starts. I mean, there, there can be a lot of things where it, it, he's at the point now where he's so burnt down from the same stuff, I don't think he really wants to keep doing it anymore. I'm convinced he's lost motivation for it. That's my takeaway about the whole thing. I'll give you some baseball scores that played out last night. Giants beat the Cubs 13 to 3. Red Sox won the series two out of three over the Yankees, three to two in ten innings. It took last night. Bell had a good outing, but in the end, it came down to Enrique Hernandez 
having an RBI team, which allowed Duval to score. The game opened up with a Turner uh, homer to right center. The Trevino had an RBI single, which allowed Donaldson and McKinney to score. Duran Duran, Jared Duran, grounded out, which allowed Wong to third and Hernandez to score in the eighth. Nice little sacrifice bunt there by Reyes and for them to take the uh, to get the runners in position. Uh, Bello, though, seven innings, three hits, two earned runs, two walks, three strikeouts. Not not great. I mean, this team is mediocre at best. I mean, they're going to be a 500 team or below 500 team going forward for the next few years. So nothing, nothing, nothing going crazy about that team at all. Nothing shell shocking at this point. Uh, as far as the Giants go. They had the series win over the Cubs this weekend, or actually they avoided a sweep, actually. So they end up losing the series at home to the Cubs. Diamondbacks beat the Tigers 7-5. Guardians took two out of three against the Houston Nationals 5-0. Orioles sweep the Royals 11-3. Phillies and Dodgers played a series. Phillies took the series. I think they took it two out of three, I believe, or, they, or, or it might have been even. I don't know if they started on a Thursday or not. Not 100% accurate about that one at all. Um. Uh, today, they're making up the date right now for the Tigers-Phillies game in Philadelphia to make up due to the fact that they had a uh, problem with the uh, air quality the last time they played the Tigers and Phillies did. Nationals beat the Braves 6-2. to two. The Braves uh, almost swept the Nationals, I believe. But instead, they uh, couldn't get the job done. They swept the Mets. They took two out of three against the Nationals. Uh, the Pirates took two out of three against the Mets, 2-1. to one. Blue Jays beat the Twins 7-6. They took two out of three as well. Rays took two out of three against the Texas Rangers 7-3. Marlins beat the White Sox 6-5. A's beat the Brewers as they swept the Brewers 8-6. Reds beat the Cardinals 4-3. Rockies beat the Padres 5-4. Angels take two out of three against the Mar Seattle Mariners 9-4. So that was that. We had the highway collapse that happened this morning in Philadelphia on I-95. The entire highway is completely shut down. So that that came completely out of nowhere. And human remains were found as rescue teams began clearing the Philadelphia uh, collapse site. That highway is completely destroyed at this point. So we expect a lot of traffic on the I-95 area in the uh, Pennsylvania, New York area for a long while. Let me put it that way. That was not a good thing to hear. That happened. And uh, non like non uh, human forms were found in a backyard over the weekend. I don't know what state this was in. I heard it was Massachusetts. I heard it was um, in the area. The problem was we. I don't have the footage, and YouTube won't let me allow me to air it. Uh, but they had cameras on it, and the cops were there. They were told to shut their body cams off and the and the other cams off. And I guess. Obviously, that is the government telling us that right now there was a UFO forming in some guy's backyard. The guy called the cops said that these are not humans. Obviously, they were ten feet away from his house, anyway, so they had to call the so he had to call it, of course. And by the picture, you can't really tell. I looked at the photo today; you couldn't really tell what this was. Otherwise, I could tell you more about it, but I I couldn't even tell you what it was. As soon as I heard it this weekend, I heard it today while I was at work about this stuff, and I couldn't believe it. So. Yeah, that's the story. We have Tofimo, who has announced his retirement from boxing today on on a first take today with Stephen A. Smith. So we got that going on. We have the PGA Tour aligning with the LIV at this point, facing government scrutiny at this point. So that'll be a, a little investigation. And Phil Mickelson's getting sued over a logo from the Live Corporate uh, Live uh, Government. Is it a done deal? No, not so much. Uh, Danielle Hunter planning to skip mini camp at this point as he's looking for a better contract at this point. He's looking to get traded, basically. And Saquon Barkley finally uh, going to be willing to sit out the rest of 2023 if he does not get his contract. He is in no rush, he says. Honestly, we've all heard this stuff before. This is not news. Barkley will get his contract extension eventually. The NFL will give in because there is no cap. And so, I can argue right now that Saquon will get his contract deal. If not, he'll get traded to Buffalo. That is my prediction. The Buffalo Bills will, will get this guy in a trade. Because if Derrick Henry ain't going to get traded to Tennessee, Saquon Barker is the next on that list to go. And I wouldn't be surprised if Derrick Henry ended up being with the Giants. 
in 2023 to replace Saquon Barkley. Another thing, too, before I even get up again, I'm just getting to notice this as well. Uh, the last Wayne Gretzky worn NHL jersey sells for $715,120 at an auction today. That happened on Sunday night in Gray Flannels Auctions. Unbelievable. It was the highest sale price for a U.S. based hockey jersey, eclipsing Mike Uzorny's 1980 Miracle on Ice jersey that sold for $657,250. In 2013. So that is your weekend recap tomorrow. Uh, oh, I almost forgot. NHL Stanley Cup Final Game 4 was on, on Saturday. The Vegas Golden Knights. I almost forgot with this, really. Jesus. Vegas Golden Knights beat the Florida Panthers. They're now up 3-1 to one in their series. As the series moves right back to Vegas tomorrow night. Uh, Charles Stevenson got two goals. Barkovar got a goal. Montour got a goal as well for the Panthers. Carlson got a goal for the Knights. Mark Stone with the two assists for the other goals. Otherwise, this was a great outing here. Eichel had uh, no assists. It was a minus one in this game. Uh, but otherwise, Hill had uh, had uh, 29 saves out of uh, out of 31 saves. There's allowed two goals. For Florida, it was Bobrovsky. With 28 saves and 31 shots. So both teams have 31 shots overall in the game. Knights come away as victorious. They're out th up 3-2. to two. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, up 3-1 in their series. They won 3-2 Saturday night. Uh, Stanley Cup final is on tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Vegas is minus 178, which means they are favored to win the whole thing tomorrow night. Nuggets heat are on tonight. Game 5 in Denver. 9 o'clock Eastern on ABC. TNT will have the uh, coverage for the NHL Stanley Cup tomorrow at 7.30. Game starts at 8. I will recap that game. This is the plan this week. Recap of that game on Wednesday, the episode uh, Tuesday, Friday, Saturdays, as you normally know. Uh, this is just the weekend recap here. I was able to give you all the stuff really quickly, give you my quick takes. And that was it. So I'm signing off here. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this nice, beautiful day because it's a gorgeous day. It's like 80 degrees, nice, comfortable 80 degree weather. It's not too warm. It's not too thick, the air, little breeze in between. I don't mind it. I think it's nice. But uh, go Nuggets. Go Golden Knights. Go Panthers. I don't even know who I'm rooting for anymore at this point. I was going with the Panthers to win in six games. I don't think it's going to happen now. The Panthers could come back and win it in seven. You never know. I have my doubts. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you all tomorrow for the entire duration of that episode. Tomorrow will be all NBA finals talk. There will not be one single sports take tomorrow. Although I will, will do a recap for the Knights Panthers game tomorrow as well. A quick preview for it. And then the entire episode will be the, based on the NBA finals. I don't know how long I'm going to go on the, the show tomorrow. It could be a half an hour on the whole subject. Could be an hour. So whatever is news developing tomorrow is all going to be shoved to Friday. Just keep it that way. It's going to be probably going to be a long episode Friday. So enjoy the rest of your day, guys. You know my social media. If you want to leave a comment, if you want to email me, you know the drill. All right. Bye, guys.